Blizzard has stopped pretending. It's abundantly obvious that Activision Blizzard are not the most popular bunch these days, and it's an interesting thing. We haven't long... watched a Bellyware video for a while. Like, it hasn't been long enough, because, like, you know, Bellyware has the same problem that I do with, like, his hair, you know? So, it hasn't been long enough for there to be, like, a visible difference, but I'm pretty sure by the time Dragonflight is over, you know, if he has to cover, you know, Diablo 4, man, it's gonna be a different story. This time they said, even to their own staff, that the good times were always just around the corner. Yeah. Now, of course, we're around that corner, and we can actually see what is there. And broadly speaking, it is games that are pretty good, mm -hmm. as just games made by designers, but also games that as overall products have severe issues. They really should have farmed more simps by making May unrealistically thick whenever she took off her coat in like that cinematic they really could have like that really would have taken overwatch so much farther that by its no really like I, I mean that would have done more for the brand than probably adding pve to overwatch 2. What's became clear is they want our time and our money. Now, Same that is a Lilith, fair thing. Yeah. It just needs to be a fair exchange of our time and money in return for whatever mm -hmm. we get from the publisher. And that is when the feelings of being nickel and dimed don't, uh, well, don't rest easy with the customer. And that Who's your operator, <laughs> Kevin Durant? Nothing says Call of Duty more than, than Kevin Durant with a green beret and an AK-47. <gasps> Bro, this game lost the fucking plot. Who the fuck wants to play Kevin Durant? It's the dumbest fucking thing. It's a bunny version of Kevin Durant. Red <laughs> Easter Kevin Durant. <laughs> That is exactly the problem we're seeing now. More egregious business models, oh right? Because the way that they're handling their battle passes and handling their microtransactions do actually manage with just that little bit that of- That guy looked like a cyberpunk version of the island boy. Extra craftiness to stick out in the industry. And if you are coming to this video being somebody that knows of Diablo 4, knows of Overwatch that? 2, but maybe Jesus, doesn't know as much about World of yeah. Warcraft, trust me, I've got a great story well, about- the dog- <laughs> They use the uh, never mind. Oh, the goddamn crafty thing that they have just started doing in World of Warcraft. Okay, here and we go. I think you're going to love it, or at the very least, find it grimly interesting. Yeah. So that's the situation. Amazing as games, really, honestly, quite dubious as products. So let's dive in to the microtransactions of Activision Blizzard and go across the whole group in a worldwide tour provided by our sponsor. Polish up your goopy gamer brain. I mean, I know mine needs it. And if you want to learn topics like maths and computer science essentially become that modern day wizard then interactively break big problems down into small ones learn and understand with brilliant.org forward slash bellular news i should make my viewers do this especially for statistics i'll like say a statistic and people be like well that's not the same for me well, I don't think like that. The first 200 to click my link get 20% off an annual plan and where they've got a 30-day free trial. So why not? It's worth it. I mean, take a number crunching that goes into video games, right? Well, if you got started learning the fundamentals of computer science, a three-part course that takes you through the pillars of the field, <laughs> then uh, perhaps hit up neural nets and algorithms, then you'll get a really good understanding of how things actually work. In one of the games that I play back in the Battle for Azeroth expansion, lag in the game completely exploded it got insane and the reason why is the sort of thing you will learn here well the reason why the lag was bad is you see you had to load in every single azurite trait that anybody could have theoretically had and you had to load in the numerical calculated values of Azerite trait damage from the Azerite gear that the player had in their bank and on their character. So that's why the lag was bad. And that was also for every single layer. So even if you were on a different layer, you still had to do it. 
And they do so much more, partnering with amazing creators like Sabina Hossenfelder, Real Engineering, and Kurtz Gazette. Brilliant basically takes the stuff that wasn't fun in school unless you had a total legend of a teacher, and it actually makes it exciting and fun. Approaching things here as an adult, I get a sense of accomplishment. It boosts my day. I think their quiz-based approach to learning is exactly the right way. So you can get started now. First 200 click my link, get 20% off at brilliant.org forward slash news, and then, of course, just go for the 30-day free trial. All right, that's brilliant. Check them out and let's go. World of Warcraft, my home territory. This is going to be a fun one. Of course, World of Warcraft having a paid subscription would usually insulate it from most of the bad. Now, of course, MMO. I mean, not anymore, bro. Like that hasn't been the case for 10 years. Like I have been mad. I've been mad about storm mounts for over 10 years. And to be fair, Bellior has also been mad about storm mounts for 10 years. But here's the truth, is that Final Fantasy does it, and people, listen, if, for example, a restaurant could serve shit and have people eat it, they would serve shit and have people eat shit. So, is it really the company's fault that people like eating shit, or is it the shit eater's fault because they just keep eating shit? have changed a bit. The two largest MMOs right now, Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft, yep. both sell additional services such as leveling- hey, yo, fuck off Burger King. Burger King's delicious. Fuck off. Boosts, you know, job boosts, that kind of thing. Yeah. Character services, and of course, forms of cosmetic content on their the in-game poo -poo, stores. Yeah. World of Warcraft also has WoW Token, which Ooh. is an innovation that is borrowed from innovation. CCP Games, who are the Icelandic developer of EVE Online, yeah. who of course pioneered the pilot license extension, Plex, which is basically just a way to kind of buy gold buy in game, money. but all yep. in a way that is actually taking part in the player economy. Kind of interesting, but it's old news. Today, what I want to focus on is the new thing that most non-WoW players will have no idea about, but makes for a great story. This is the trading post, right? Now, the trading post is a little area in Stormwind. The trading post is a battle pass system that's added into the game every month. That's what it is. It's basically a battle pass for the month of activities for you to do. Orgrimmar, you go there, you click in the NPC, and what and you get- And it's great, by the way. The trading post is a universal W. Well, it was until now. But um, yeah, I actually think it's a, it's a great, it's a great system, it's a great design. I think it's awesome is every single month a different set of cosmetic items that you yeah. can purchase. They're really Now, cool. they're purchased for a currency called Trader's Tender. Ooh, you get tenders. 500 Trader's Tender from owning the Dragonflight expansion. You get mm -hmm. 500 Trader's Tender per month that oh. your account has subscription. Oh. And if you like don't log in for a month, you don't lose it or anything. Then, of course, you get 500 a month by just playing the game. Ooh, that that's means for the most worst people, part. you get 1,000 Trader's Tender a month. And for that Trader's Tender, you buy items on the store. Blizzard's intent, of course, is you can't buy everything in the store every single month. Yeah. But you that is pick. going to be something that they think will feel a bit more okay because as time goes on, things will rotate in and out of the store. Right. And broadly speaking, it's just a little bit more spice and reinforcement to play the game. I think it's I think the traders post is a universal W and I have nothing bad to say about it at all. It's only good. And broadly speaking, players Until. actually really liked it. Yeah. It was a way for Blizzard to give yeah. people access to new cosmetics. It wasn't some crazy paid thing on top of your, you know, your yeah, subscription true. if you wanted a cool cloak or a scarf oh, wow. or whatever you could just go and get it it actually felt good to players it was a smart move mm -hmm. however then things began to change we found this the guardian pack right here you can see it costs do you want to be medivh the guardian of tiras fall who opened the dark portal okay we'll give us five dollars all right well now you're medivh Six pounds and 80 pence in the UK. Now this gives you basically three items, but the disclaimer text says that this uh -huh. is a time limited deal until May 31st. So it leaves right. the store at that point. Oh, I missed out. Items from the pack will arrive on the trading post between September 1st and December 31st, 2023. So Which I really, by the way, I don't really care about this that much. If you can buy a cosmetic early, and you can get it in game as well from like the trading post. I really feel like this is like, it, it, I don't think, you, bro, like we pay a sub and we buy expansions. Like we shouldn't have any of this in the game. 
like on there should not be any of this but if there is any of it this is probably the least painless one the idea here is hey do you want this thing early if so buy it now also if you buy it now then you won't have to buy it with your limited traders tender yeah. in the future what happens if these items come into the store in you know between september and december and the store just happens to be very expensive that maybe month. they should add ats into this month well that actually is going to be the case so suffice to say people who are maybe caught between getting the new shiny thing that's appeared in the store or the guardian pack if they've already That'd got the guardian idea. pack they're going to feel pretty good about all the tender mm -hmm. that they saved oh yeah now this is where it gets interesting. A whole bunch of assets were data mined, and uh, they looked like almost, you know, mobile game gem bundles. They look like that. Ian has a coast. Well, yeah, I mean, I wonder why. To said, nope, we are not going to be selling Trader's Tender directly. They may be a part of, quote, significant bundles. Now, at the time, he mm -hmm. mentioned, like, the, uh, you know, the collector's edition of an expansion. He said, hey, the collector's uh -oh. edition has got some trader's tender in it. That's pretty good because then somebody gets the cosmetic that they know they definitely want instead of just something that we've bundled in that they may not like. Yeah, but you sure. know what? I think the trader's tender is uh, just about a perfect thing to put on the collector's edition, uh, you know, tier of a game. That makes a lot of sense. But we always thought significant bundles. So expansion editions mm -hmm. and perhaps... The BlizzCon virtual ticket, but probably not anything more. That, however, ever uh, why the fuck do people even buy this? Like, it takes like two hours to do this a month. Like, am I crazy? Like, it takes like two hours. Wh wh why? Why do people need to buy this? Like, everybody is where things changed, and they've changed in the form of a genuine microtransaction. The Corsage Pack. It oh, costs £4.50, no, right? Uh, and it, can, it uh, contains two Corsage... Yep, yeah, there it is, right there. You get to spend money, and you have to buy a Corsage for all the people that never went to prom. I never went to prom, personally. Um, It's because of this game. Primary reason. Corsages, these are just like little flower things you put in your wrist. Now, those corsages... I'm shocked, um, yeah, I know, big surprise, guys. that I believe were on the store, and they cost either 150 or 100 traders tender. So it contains two of those worth 200 traders tender, but it also contains just 200 traders tender. Mm -hmm. So it is directly sold as a part of this bundle. Now, because of the way this bundle is, people are thinking, that's not a significant bundle. And now we're basically all thinking, oh, shit, I know what they're doing. They're turning the screw. They're increasing the pressure. They are going I to... I don't know why they don't just add traders tender to the store. Why not just let people buy it? Like, I mean, you let people buy gold. Like... <laughs> like, I mean, what do you... Like, what's left? Yeah, just give them time. I mean, bro, like, just fuck the slippery slope. Push them off the cliff. To make the store more expensive as the yeah, months go on, but yeah. then they're going to start selling more and more small bundles with bonus tender in them. Of course. This very much seems like the start of that. Many would say, at least a few months ago, hey, you're making a slippery slope argument. Well, now that we have slid down that slope, I think we can... You know, we slippery can slope arguments, the reason why it's a... Slippery slope arguments are not fundamentally a fallacy. Slippery slope arguments become a fallacy whenever you draw a correlation between two unrelated things. There are, of course, many examples of things that are functionally a slippery slope argument of getting your foot in the door as a salesman, or anchoring a price in the person's mind. Like, there are a lot of these techniques that exist in psychology, and people that use slippery slope, 95% of them don't even understand what it means or what the actual fallacy is versus what the actual implication is of it. Like an argument to authority, for example, this is not necessarily a bad thing, it's a bad thing whenever the authority is not attached to any sort of credibility on the topic. People don't know shit. It's not a slippery slope at all. Look at how far we've slid and how much mud we're covered in. 
And uh, this is where it gets interesting. So here Bro, the I calculated the cost, right? I've calculated every single month of the trading Something post. Is, what about a man? Remember, what about you get 1,000 yeah. per month. So February, 5,025. March, 4,650. Uh -huh. April, 4,725. May, 4,075. June, 5,750. You may think, oh, June, that's getting a wee bit more that's pricey. A lot. Oh boy. July, 6,200. However, they did give us a bonus 200 that could be earned in-game for July and August. Oh, wow. But August is where it really accelerated because the total cost of the trading post in August is 8,200. That is actually double the cost of May. So and what they're saying is they're going to make the game more realistic by adding in inflation? Oh, that's good. And August is also the month where they had a $15... Um, yeah, they had a $15 uh, transmog that will be in the trading store or the trading post in the future. So they just did the Guardian Pack thing again. Now, of course, in the context of seeing how expensive this trading post is, mm -hmm. a lot of people think, oh boy, I really want to save those tender when I can. Yeah. And they also did the Corsage Pack. So you can get another 200. But here's where it gets more interesting. And it is these. These are class based. These are really cool, man. That's badass. The warrior one, I'm assuming, on the left? That looks cool. ...sets of armor. You can see here, these are the oh, main bits paladin. of armor that uh, kind of define the what silhouette the of the character. They're designed for mixing and matching. We got those. Where's we have some... One? Look at these paladin weapons. They look that pretty, looks pretty sick, cool, right? Yeah. Now, the weapons cost 500. Oh, wow. And the armor, for one class, of course, costs 450. Oh, wow. That's 950. And bear in mind oh, that wow. one earns a maximum of 1,000 every single month. Oh, wow. They're doing three classes a month, and then in right. December, there'll be four classes. So that is like 2,850 more tender. And then other items have been data mined as well. So if we look at I mean, I still think that's totally fine. I mean, like, am I the only person that doesn't think this is a big deal? Just because there are some OCD, hyper, like, weird fucking completionist people in the game. Like, I, I don't think it's a big deal that they add in a bunch of new sets. Like, who cares? Oh my god, you can't buy every single one the day it comes out. It's broken. I I I, I have to I have to I have to I have to, I have to get everything. Have, like, get the fuck out of it. Just relax. Fucking relax. This price trend where we see August being 8200, that is either going to stay the same or continue. But it could be a dungeon drop. I unironically think the trading post is good for the game. I do. I don't think adding this as a dungeon drop into a Wrath of the Lich King dungeon would be any better. I do. I, I just buy it. No, I buy it by playing the game if I want to. Like, I'm not talking about the store mount. I'm just saying the pricing is not... I don't think it's a big deal. So, to recap what we've seen here, they've started putting more and more and more tender in, uh, you know, in, in the game, right, with this Corsage mm -hmm. bundle. At the same time, they have increased the cost of the items and the quantity of items they're, they're putting into the store every single month, going from 5,000 to now 8,200. So, essentially, they are setting things up so the tender will be something that they can monetize via these small bundles like the Corsage Pack or the well, Guardian. it makes sense, right? Because you want to incentivize people to feel like they want to buy more tender, and so then they buy the packs to get more tender. Yeah, of course. As I said, I think that after the WoW token, everything else is on the table. You can buy anything with gold that you want in the game, and you can buy gold with real money. Cry me a fucking river, or if we're going to talk about them adding uh, fucking cosmetics that you can buy into the you can buy gold. Like, I, how, did, how does nobody even talk about it? It's like nobody even talks about this. What the fuck? Gotcha and wow soon? Here's the thing. I know a lot of people are sad about the state of wow. You can play Classic Era right now. And there's no gotcha in Classic Era. There's no WoW tokens in Classic Era. You can go and play it right now. Yet? That's right. And, and, and for now, we can enjoy that. And on Hardcore WoW that's coming out in a few days, there's not going to be any of this shit.
So I can just not think about it. It's sad to see what the game has turned into. But in a way, I don't even think it's the game's fault. It's the player base's fault. The player base has made the game what it is, they've accepted it, and Blizzard has just simply adapted to the audience. I'm not, like, that angry about this. Like, actually, that's not true. I am angry about it. But it's just people have accepted this for years. They're complacent with it. And they don't care. Like, anybody that plays WoW, like, I get shit on constantly for saying these things are problematic. Am I crazy for not giving a fuck? about cosmetics whenever you can buy and sell gold? You were the voice of reason when everyone else said you were a madman? Yes, everybody else said I was crazy. Everybody was shitting on me. I was getting shit on constantly for years. Fuck it. This is what you get. You get what you fucking deserve. I just, I, I yeah, when they... Impact. And when you think about it, what is their goal? It is to increase the average revenue per user. Duh. We're at a stage yes, in the true. life cycle of the Dragonflight 100%. expansion where, look, this is an expansion that's retaining people really well, but it's not getting a lot of new people in. Yeah, people got really mad about the uh, Tyrael's Charger. I am so amazed how much value people place in, like, trash cosmetics like this, by the way. Like, I had Tyrael's Charger back in the day. You know why? It's because I signed my dad's credit card up to pay for WoW for a year. It has no value, no meaning. It's simply a... It's not even a participation reward. It's a money reward. I bought this with real money 10 years ago. Give it to everybody in the game for all I care. It doesn't matter. Jesus. Getting people really well, but it's not getting a lot of new people in. Of course, you still impressive. want to make yeah, money go up. Huh? Therefore, you try to make more money out of the people that you do have. This yeah, is exactly how True. they are doing it. Now, it's this, uh, you know, the phrase, to turn Good. the screw, right? To increase the pressure. This is what actually yeah. made me make this video. I just thought, oh, yeah, they're totally screwing up the pressure here. I think we should Ooh. do a recap of all the things they're doing across their business so that people can understand how... I don't know. I feel like the frog is already at boiling point temperature. <laughs> If you want me to be honest, I think the frog is already overcooked. So, like, if you turn the temperature up at this point, the frog's been dead for five years. It's not even going to mind. Companies trying to make money out of them. So that's World of Warcraft covered. However, next, we're going to go to Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty still retails for 70 USD. Warzone is free to play, and both COD and Warzone all share the same uh, microtransaction store. Now, if you go to the- Wars Wasn't Warzone 1 so good on release, man? Dude, that was such a fun game. I had so much fun playing. It was actually such an incredible fucking game. Like the Gulag, and the fucking, the John McCain simulator, uh, fucking the loadouts, being able to buy people back. Oh, man. Dude, I remember, like, me and Nick and Train would play Warzone pretty regularly. It was so fun. I wish we could go back to that. It was, like, 2020. Steam store. And, uh, remember... This is, on the Steam store, just bonus packs. Jesus! You see a total of £343. Pounds. That's maybe... It's almost yeah, I forget like what the exact uh, exchange rate is. Maybe that's like $550, $600, something like that. Anyway, it's quite a lot of money. Of Making course, you then add to gun, that Call of Duty you know, points for all the things that you buy in-game with Call points. Then we have got the DMZ oh bundles, which, as I've covered numerous times in this channel, do... What is this? Like... Who is this guy? ...do contain, like, mild pay-to-win elements, but they yeah. still are player power for buying... Oh, here we go. Snoop Dogg, Return of the Shizzle. And it's Snoop Dogg with a two fucking machine guns. That one looks like Keemstar, to be fair. Holy shit, guys. Call of Duty really, um... Man.
saying the thing. So I'm sorry, it's the principle that counts. Now, within Call of Duty, there is actually the option to earn enough Call of Duty points within a battle pass to purchase the next battle pass. That's cool. This is something that is That's not great. done in Diablo 4 no, or in not. Overwatch 2. True. Um, so usually there is 300 per season on the free track or 1300 COD points um, on the full battle pass. But the thing is, very obviously, you can just spend those in-game. Most of the desirable mm -hmm. bundles cost 2,400 points. Oh, there it is, Kevin Durant. Nothing says Call of Duty more than, than Kevin Durant with a green beret and an AK-47. With, with Homelander and fucking Snoop Dogg, and there's also a rabbit. And there's a cat operator as, oh my god. Does the cat, uh, like, I feel like being a cat would be bad because wouldn't it make the hitbox bigger? You can play as messy. Oh my God. The community are now really quite pissed off about. What is this? Uh, since May, they've started to put those out at 3,000 points. Was that th 30 bucks? the point bucks? is that while, yeah, your, your battle pass gives you 1,300 points and you can buy the next battle pass with it, the real goal is to bring you into the ecosystem, right? Oh, now, yeah. the thing is, what if you want Black Cell? Because Black Cell is their latest revenue innovation. And this is something that actually was soaring up the Steam. Oh, up. Oh, this is. Okay, so it's premium battle pass. I get it. Yeah, they changed the name. This actually hoodwinked me for a good three seconds. But yeah, okay, so this is this is just an upgraded version of a battle pass. So it's just like a, another tier of battle pass. Good one. Really good idea here. It was doing that well. And that's just people buying it through Steam. So Black Cell is a premium battle pass on top of the paid battle pass uh -huh. that gives you additional rewards that can only be purchased with real money. Oh. So it itself has got like new unique things. But also Black Oh, Cell is this that anime girl that they put on the gun that talks to you like a scuffed version of Cortana? That's it, right? Yeah? Okay, I thought so. Basically, uh, it changes up some of the pathing in the battle pass to give you a bit more freedom and unlock some of the more uh, high-ticket things a bit earlier. At least one of the Black Cell passes did that. And yes, every time Black Cell releases, it goes to near the top of the Steam charts. You want to know my unironic ranking for like, uh, like I haven't played Warzone in so long, I'm not even sure. You know what I think the best BR is? Fortnite. I think it's the best BR. It's the best playing BR. Yeah. I think it's incredible. It's a great game. Apex? I think Apex is a great game. I like Fortnite more, though. Of course, that's not even considering Apex is a great game, game spending yeah, money Apex because the thing that goes up the Steam charts, I believe, is actually the Black Long Cell time Bundle ago. because that is listed as a piece of DLC on the Steam platform. So, as we can see here, the seasonal Call of Duty model is something that's really defining what an Activision Blizzard game is going to be looking like in the future. And even if one looks More at like the very ill advised game. Crash Team Rumble, um, oh, which yeah. is not getting a full section in today's video because, frankly, it's not as, it's just not that important of a game. Nobody um, cares. But it did launch with a free battle pass for pre-ordered copies and of course you know if you didn't pre-order the crash team rumble you know what this feels like this feels like whenever somebody has like a loved one resurrected as a zombie and they have to kill them you know and something like i don't know if they did this in the walking dead never really watched it but it's like one of those things where it's like you have this childhood game that you love and it has like a battle pass now and there's like fucking like an NPC that shames you for not spending money, you know. Then, yeah, you got to pony up for the battle pass. That's, of course, to get that continued engagement after launch. Now, of course, get as we know, this. these are uh, practices Jesus. that are making their way over from Call of Duty towards the other game. So let's Ooh. talk about Overwatch 2. I'll do this quick because we've talked about this game a lot anyway. So, there's one good positive here, and that is no loot boxes. True. The problem, of course, is everything else that followed, because look, yeah. with, those, with those loot boxes, they sucked, but every time you leveled up, you got one, and that meant that your average Joe playing the game could... I don't know why they don't just add loot boxes back and make it to where you can't buy them. Like, wouldn't that just make the game better and make people want to play it more? 
Because, like, I guarantee you, people probably burn out and they stop playing and then they don't come back and spend more micro, like, they don't spend more money. Because at least if you have loot boxes, you have, like, and this is why the loot boxes in Overwatch 1 were good as a reward for gameplay. Like, buying loot boxes is bad, that's it, right? So, like, let's just get that out of the way. We're just talking about getting loot boxes from winning or playing a game. The reason why it was so good is it provided a progression system that was beyond just ranking up. Because this is a problem that a lot of these, like, competitive games have, is that people will, like, rank up, and they'll go from, like, you know, bronze to silver, from silver to gold, and then maybe go from gold to, like, plat or something like that, and then they'll just kind of sit there, right? And so if somebody's sitting at plat, and they're, they're plateauing, and, uh, what the fuck is the progress in the game? What are they doing? And I think that if you have cosmetics that you can work towards, at least you're doing something. You win the game, you lose the game, you still make progress towards something. And the cosmetics were that available. They, they, they were that system. And that's what made it available and possible for people to do that. So I don't know why they don't just add the loot boxes into Overwatch 2 and just not make them buyable or make them less common or make them give a little bit less stuff because the game's free now i feel like anything would be better than what they have now i don't know am i crazy like i i, I think like i don't think this would ruin the game i don't think it would ruin people's like the monetization fuck you could even make it where you couldn't buy the mythic skins you can make it like oh you can only buy them with like usd or whatever like that would kind of be cheesy or be stupid but like even that would be better than what we have. They want money? Well, the, the, here's the thing, man. It's like, you're not going to get any money from a person who's plateaued out on their on their ELO, and they're just not going to play anymore because there's no progress and nothing that they're doing in the game. They're just playing the same game over and over and over again with no progress, no movement, no progression, no goal, nothing. That's the problem. So, like, whenever those people aren't getting into the game, well, well, if they're not playing the game, they're not going to be spending money on it. During a new event, actually have you a have shot keep people at getting in the game. those new skins and stuff by just playing the game. That is essentially dead now. So Overwatch 2 has followed the COD seasonal model, but it's actually made things so much worse. Number one, rapid seasons. But the Battle Pass on the store launched the same day as the game, unlike in Call of Duty, mm. where uh, that stuff's actually delayed post-launch. New characters are locked behind the Battle Pass, and the Battle Pass does not have enough currency within it to purchase your next Battle Pass. This immediately... Uh, a very important context for this, uh, you know, like I, I, as I said, I've shit on Overwatch a lot, but the characters in competitive are not available immediately whenever they're put out into the game. So you do have enough time to farm them. It's not like you have to buy them day one of them being released in order to play. So it is that that it, it, it makes it it's not good, but it's better drew a lot of ire. Progression was kind of slow, everything felt messy, it started as a bad product and continued on as such. Some mm -hmm. things have got better. At least when they do events now, they contain an absolute boatload of um, you know, of XP, and unfortunately, sometimes Jeff Bezos will give you some Battle Pass tiers, because that's the world that we live in. Thanks, Jeff. Now, what to continue, nice you've got the in-game challenges, right? These are part of the free-to-play model. Now, these in-game challenges, if you, if you did all of your weekly challenges from launch, it would have taken you from launch to May of 2023 to be ordered to, uh, to be able to afford a legendary skin. So it's oh pretty bad God. if a game is saying, hey, either- Don't they have mythic skins that are even more than that? grind for six months or pay 20 bucks the rotating store i just like i don't understand like they have so many characters and so many skins why not let people earn them faster because like you know for example like you have to keep people on the hamster wheel it's kind of like the uh the carrot on a stick analogy is that if you put the carrot too far away from the horse the horse doesn't keep going towards the carrot you put the carrot on the moon, the horse is like, I can't, I'm not going to get, fuck that. That's the issue. Is the carrot's too far away? The thing that is actually, you know, one's attention is drawn to 
it only really shows things in the context of a bundle. And these are skin bundles that usually just have, honestly, a bunch of shite thrown into them that people won't exactly want. Now, here's the Cyber Mega bundle, right? But uh -huh. do you know what the really funny thing is? And by the way, this bundle's like, it's got a whole bunch of stuff. You can see 3,200 Overwatch points instead of the 7,700 that all of these things would otherwise wow. uh, cost. Of course, you can Even see there, there's three legendary skins. So in short, you can play the game for very minimal reward, or you can just buy rewards of all kinds. This, of course, value. is a bad incentive to actually play Been the game. By going forward, Immortal. though, we're going That's to nothing. have paid campaign missions. These were controversial because yeah. the game was supposed to come with this PvE stuff, and but of course they had a very seemingly necessary production pivot. Now, here's the odd thing. And keep in Tech mind that the, the profit, the way that it was going to work, is that you were able to play, you would have to pay money to do the PvE version of the game, but it was a one-time payment the same as Overwatch 1 was a one-time payment. And the PvP was free to play. It was kind of like Call of Duty, right? Where like you have Warzone that's free to play, but if you want to play the actual Call of Duty, you have to spend money for the campaign and everything. So it's the exact same thing. So like even in the original system, this is a downgrade. Because, like, I mean, the game, how much would the game be, right? Like $70? Okay. So like after a year of playing the game you would have saved money if you bought every single battle pass for, like, the PvE content. Technically speaking, in terms of value, the missions only cost five bucks, but they don't, because the only way to buy them is to get the $15 bundle, mm -hmm. which does contain 1,000 Overwatch coins, which is enough for the premium battle pass, meaning it's a 10 US dollar equivalent. It also comes with a brand new Sojourn Legendary skin, 19 USD value, and permanent access to Sojourn as a playable uh, hero for new players. And of course, the missions. So you can see there, it's a uh, 29 USD value plus whatever value you put to the missions. Or you could buy the Ultimate Invasion Bundle at $40, oh, which contains uh, a uh, 30 USD value uh, premium battle pass. Um, then 1,000 coins more for a total of 2,000 coins, which is 20 a 20 skips. USD value. Wow. Meaning, oh, and also two legendary skins for Cassidy and Kira. I mean, again, like, I don't really have a problem. Like, it, it, you know, for real, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's a USD value or that's good boy points, right? But like, it's basically real money. Um, but... I don't know. I think it's fine. I just think it's overpriced. Thirty-eight dollars. So that's what thirty-eight dollars, uh, fifty-eight, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, the eighty-eight money. Yeah, bucks. Yeah, it's just overpriced. Of value for 40 bucks you can quite see, uh, clearly see what they're doing here now in the case of those missions look they were pretty good they felt like i think stylosa called them archives plus i would totally agree with them there they feel like archives plus i think they're actually really fun content to do with a group of people but overall as a value proposition as a broad product it ain't working that yeah. basically means this stuff all sucks I do actually have a battle plan for how Overwatch 2 could, I don't want to say- I don't understand how the people that work on Overwatch still work there. I feel like if you fail to deliver a product and you fuck up this big, how are you still employed at the company? How does that happen? It's like insane saved but how it could be significantly redeemed i will not belabor that point and i shall do that as a future video i do at least want to try to give back or at least throw some ideas into the mix that allow overwatch 2 to be a free-to-play game that people might actually mm -hmm. like to play because at the very least if i do that then i suppose that idea can be the uh, anvil upon which blizzard are hammered Hmm, that seems a bit aggro. Okay, Diablo 4. So this is a game at the start of its life cycle, and uh, it's only getting started on its monetization journey. You know, it's just, it's just a monetization toddler. Go easy on it. Of course, it's a paid game. It has no free-to-play option, like with Warzone. Do you guys think that there's going to be, like, which season do you think they're going to add a boost to 50 if you buy a Battle Pass tier? You guys are thinking 3 or 4? Season two. Tomorrow. <laughs> it's gonna get announced tomorrow. Four? Okay. Alright, so people are not very I I mean like again, remember I have the five hundred dollar bet. So we'll see what happens. I've got six months. And it's only been three months. So we've got two more seasons.
cost 70 bucks, had a store from day one, a battle pass tied to the seasons. But where it is different is, of course, the expectations of continued paid expansions, which will significantly alter the base game, likely in the way that Reaper of Souls did. Now, on the seasonal model, it is the ubiquitous situation, a free pass that contains shite um a ten dollar premium one and a 25 bucks uh fast premium tier now the i feel like i'm one of those boomers that just literally doesn't give a fuck about this shit at all like i actually like if there's a cosmetic you get from the store that cosmetic has like every cosmetic from the store has the same value to me zero like i don't care what the battle pass rewards are I'm only going to look up the battle pass for like the little things that I need to click to give me more experience that you get from the free track. Like I haven't even redeemed all of my rewards from the battle pass. I think I finished it. I don't even know. Like I, I, I just don't give a fuck. I don't know why people care. These run in three-month blocks, and uh, of course, they went for the rather meme-like, oh, it's the number of the beast, 666, that's how much premium currency you get, when of course, that's actually not enough premium currency to buy anything in the in-game shop, Yep, I believe, certainly not anything you'd actually want, and it's of course not enough to buy the next battle pass, which, in a game that has an upfront cost, I think is really shitty and terrible. So... That's not particularly great. And on the store, the you know the developers have been very adamant. It's just it's it's monetized too many times. That uh, they don't want players to feel like anything available in the store is necessarily. What if Nvidia or AMD did this shit? Lock up your graphics card with a battle pass. Do not ever type that again. There could be an employee from one of those companies that could be watching the stream right now. Do not ever type that. Do not utter those words ever again in a public space. I probably should ban you for just saying that. To be fair, didn't Apple just lose a lawsuit on planned obsolescence, where they're owing between 500 and $200 million to customers? Thank God for that. Massive W. ...than what they can get in the game visually. Um, this, of course, is, um, you know, they want them to not be wacky and stay in the aesthetic uh, sort of base of the game. Uh, that's a load of BS. Now, there are some of them, like, say, the Shadow Walker one, which, like, you know, you, you can see it still feels... I mean, look, they all do feel quite Diablo 4, but the thing mm -hmm. is, if you want to actually lean into an aesthetic, you know, have your rogue almost have this, like, backstory told in their gear that, you know, they spent time in the forests hunting pelts, and now they, you know, they wear wolves and shit. Yeah. Like, that seems like the sort of thing that should be in-game armor. No, it's not. There is one um, that's, uh, like, a sort of a jester, an evil-looking stabby jester. Oh. Looks really cool. My gauntlet, Premium. Dark Legacy. And when you compare that's it my to main character. the very, very vanilla-looking ones that you get uh, just by playing the game, no, absolutely, this is a cash shop that feels like a cash shop. It feels bad. It doesn't feel like more options. It feels like if you want any options other than the sort of default small, like, I don't know, Venn diagram, whatever, uh, of gear, of, of aesthetics, you got to pony up. That I personally don't really care a lot about the cash shop cosmetics in Diablo 4. I like, oh, like, I don't know, like, I'm going to sound like maybe a simp here, but, like, I really like the cosmetics, the base cosmetics in Diablo 4. I think they look great. And I think a lot of the cash shop cosmetics are way too over-designed. I feel like the, the cash shop cosmetics, and, like, I'm talking about mainly Barbarian, like, I love the Barbarian base armor. Because it makes me feel like I, I'm a fucking, uh, I'm like, it, 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 like, my character looks like it was made by Frazetta, you know? And, like, I don't want to see some over-designed fucking battle pass set with, like, a bunch of spikes and skulls on the spikes, and then the spikes have, like, eyes that are glowing. Get the fuck out of here. Like, raw, dark, low fantasy. And I like it a lot. And I felt the same way about the, uh, about the fucking Necromancer, too. No, I like both of them. So, like, I don't really care a lot about the cosmetics. I, it's just not a big deal. Feels bad because some of these bundles, like the Wraith bundle, uh, Wraith Lord, was 40% of the base price of the game. That's so, D4, absolutely very overpriced. Now, it, it, I don't it, have other things in I mean, $1 would be overpriced. It's, it's, 
it's lines of code. Like, there's no... It, 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 it's, it's all bullshit. In our show notes today, prepared by the, as always, wonderful uh, Connor and our team. However, there are some other things. Uh, a really good example. Bro, can you imagine if... Uh... Levagast, if, if what was what was his fr his friend's name? I, I know his friend's name is Levagast on Twitter, the Final Fantasy guy. I, I haven't seen him on a video for a long time. Matt, yeah, if can you imagine how long this video would be if Matt was on this video? This would be like a 1.5 hour video. Well, it's Hearthstone. You know, where um, they did the battlegrounds mode, the auto battler, and the only way that they could really That's monetize, really yeah, I uh, actually the like I, yeah. mode of Hearthstone was funny enough to just sell cosmetics. Now, that didn't, you know, earn them as much money as they wanted, evidently, mm -hmm. because there were mild pay-to-win elements in the next thing they tried, mercenaries. But the community just bounced back against mercenaries so hard that, uh, yeah, they cancelled that mode. So now they're back to just trying to really dip into their whales hard. And man, some of that whaling is pretty damn crazy. Uh, right now, there's... Because uh, they have these, like, premium signature cards, right? They're, mm -hmm. like, all diamond crazy-looking things. And, you know, I remember there was, like, a diamond Drek'thar card that cost a stupid amount of money. And they, uh, they actually went back in that and refunded everybody. But this new one they've done for the Titans expansion, it's three cards for, like, 45 bucks. And it's like, man, three legendaries for 45 bucks? Like, that's crazy. And I know we're in a world where, oh, Post Malone buys the one ring in Magic the Gathering. But still, I think you get my point. And, Har and even Hearthstone, it is quite ridiculous in the, you know, in, in how its monetization is going. So really, I just think this entire thing is ridiculous. Like, I'm going to have, like, probably another boomer on popular take. I think the idea of playing a video game that is a card game on the internet I think it's fucking ridiculous. I do. I, I think I think the entire idea of Hearthstone is fucking ridiculous. I used to go to FNM, Friday Night Magic, and I would draft every fucking Friday. And most Fridays, I'd say 80% of Fridays, I would make my fucking money back from the draft because I would get enough packs. And I would have them ready for the next fucking draft. It was like a battle pass in real life. I just... I, I don't get how people would want to. I, I don't. I, I'm. I'm not the target audience. I guess. All of this is to say. Say this to Crip. I was so mad at him whenever I started playing this game. Worse. Like ten years ago. I want ago. to return to World of Warcraft yeah. just for another example. I remember Cora played a lot of people too. I got mad me, at her hey, too. Hey, you don't need to buy these. Uh, to which I say, look, if you're playing Overwatch 2 and you're playing Overwatch 2 just because you think it's fun and you want to be better good for more you more power to you yeah that's actually how i play overwatch 2 again i think overwatch 2 is an excellent game but a bad product now whenever i play it i play that's it. that's a really good insight i agree with him i have fun i stop i try not to be extrinsically motivated by shiny things in overwatch 2 because i understand that that is just not going to be a winning proposition for me well I... if i want to buy a skin in the game i just buy the skin in the game who cares like that's fine whatever and, and like i know what i'm getting i buy it and it, it is what it is but I, I mean i don't really do that but like theoretically that's what i would do you know if, if i if i want uh you know if i want my goopy brain to be uh you know tickled about maybe i just go and play a single player game that's going to mm -hmm. be very rewarding to play or even something with some creativity like i don't know like honestly even a mind single player but game in world like of Warcraft, new world there's a such a clear example of how this type of monetization is actually bad for players so in wow of course you have mounts right mm -hmm. now back in the day and I think everybody who's played WoW probably knows the Netherwing Drake. And if you don't know oh, yeah. my name, uh, here's what they look like. These were like, seen the Burning Crusade? This was like the coolest, like the Ashes of Alar and these guys, they were like the coolest mounts to own, right? Um, now, yeah. the way that this worked is you did a reputation, right? You know, it was maybe 30 days of some grinding, 20 days, whatever, yeah. and you get this mount at the end. So you'd see people with that and you think, oh, wow, you know, you, you did that. That also, that reputation was like the only time you saw Illidan outside of, uh, outside of the Black Temple raid, which is quite bizarre. Later on in Mists of Pandaria, you had the Order of the Cloud Serpent where it's basically yeah, a sort of eggs. Chinese dragon. I think they look awesome, but you learned how to ride one over the course of that reputation. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the reputation, you got to buy the mounts. Then what happened in Warlords of Draenor, right? It was before Warlords. They had this, the Fey Dragon. Now the Fey Dragon is- The funniest fucking thing about this is I remember Bellior and, and I did a video about this exact topic, talking shit about it, 
literally like 10 years ago whenever it came out I remember this so fucking well because I stayed up until like 6 in the morning it was me, him, and heel versus babyface and we fucking shit on this for like 2 hours Is uh, it's a pretty cool looking mount there it is now this is something that's quite hilarious because this just appeared in the store out of the blue. Yeah. It was only in 2014's Warlords of Draenor expansion oh, that we saw a place in Shadow Moon Valley called the Dracorium. Yes. And it turned out yep. that's actually where the local the, Draenei fucking, raised yep. these fey dragons. And that's when I realized it. This was a store mount. Why can I not earn one in game? And, and because, the thing is also, this was right off of the heels of them adding the Rylak mount during um, fucking Siege of Orgrimmar. And the Rylak mount, and, and like, so it was totally unique, totally new. It was the first one they ever added into the game. And then they added the Siege of Orgrimmar, like, raider achievement was just Galakras, which was like, it, it's just another proto-drake. So, like, the store gets, like, this super unique, cool mount, and, like, the game gets this fucking reskin with, like, armor on it. Like, who cares? And I, I remember I made a video... And it had like the two pictures of the mounts with like a greater than sign for the Rylak. And it said, let's be real. I don't remember what video this was, but like, I was so fucking pissed off about this. Like this is, it's like rage nostalgia for me to see this. I, I, di I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> it's actual rage nostalgia. Because it was a storm mount. And then I think back to the Order of the Cloud Serpent. And what do yep. I think? I'm like, oh yeah. Remember the way that I had this whole reputation where I, you know, helped the people who do things mm -hmm. with the Cloud Serpents. I learned how to ride one and then I got one at the end and that was a cool piece of content. Then I looked at Warlords of Draenor. I was like, hmm, why is there not a reputation at the Dracorium? And at the end, I get the mount. Dude, oh my God. We literally fucking talked about this. It was like 10 years ago, whenever this shit happened. And I said, why the fuck? Is it not attack? Because there were these reps in 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 Wad, and the reps like the, you didn't do anything with the reputations. Like they had, like they gave you nothing. They would just give you like actually they they did give you something. They would just give you a um like a, a fucking like a reskinned boar. So like you would farm out the rep at the vendor for the for the fucking fey dragons, and then you would they would give you a boar. And the Fey Dragons are like right there. It's like the guy's name is basically Fey Dragon Fender, and he sells you a fucking boar. No, the red boar. No, that one was from, uh, that was from Tan and Jungle. I remember that. That you had to farm the uh, fucking uh, those uh, silver, not silverback, uh, fucking saber stalkers rep for that. I remember that. I farmed that myself. Plus the Pexus crystals. Yeah, the claws. Oh my god. That they raise at the Dracorium. Yes. It's a store mount. And as time went on, we saw this pattern more and more and more. Mm -hmm. You have the likes of the Sovarian Dreamer. It's uh, quite a beautiful looking mount that. Uh oh, bro. Like, where is this? Where is this, dude? Asmongold 8.2 store mount rage. <laughs> to buy this new mount for a game I've already paid for three times. Ooh. Thank you, Blizzard. Oh, I'm so hyped. Wow. God, bro. Like, come out. I mean, Reddit is already going crazy over it. They're hyped as shit. They're buying it. They're buying eight of them at a time. That's Reddit loves it. The, Reddit is buying their wife none of these mounts, man. So did you buy the cop mount? No, I, is it actually on Reddit? Like, they better not be happy about this. Are you serious? Oh my god. Has a heart attack. Uh, six months, that's it. Okay, where's the rest of these? Uh, ah, shit. Here we go again. Wait, why am I dead? Okay, just a second. Uh, it's so fucking funny, man. It is so fucking funny for me to see this shit. Because I remember. I remember whenever every single one of these store mounts was out. I remember what I was doing. I remember like when I got mad. Yep. As it turns out, is raised in Ardenweald in the Shadowlands yes. expansion. Why can we not earn a Sylvarian Dreamer in game? Because it was a store slash six month subscription bonus mount. Yep. It wasn't in game content. 
And then a lot of the time when you look at the mounts in World of Warcraft these days, it very much is the case that like, okay, personal preferences are applied to this. There's sure. many cases I do prefer the in-game mounts included in my sub to, you know, I can just go and earn. Often I do prefer those to the store ones, but generally speaking, the store mounts have the most love and attention. They are the highest ticket items. Well, uh, they have the most attention put into them. Even if you like the, like, I think one of the greatest mounts of all time and wow is the original Gnomish flying machine. I do. It's one of the greatest mounts ever made. It's a fucking flawless, beautiful mount that reminds me of Warcraft 2. And it is time. Uh, the Raven Lord, bro. Like, the Raven Lord was fucking lit. Memoron's head. Well, Memoron's head was good because it had a good sound to listen to in the background while you were masturbating. But that's something different. We're not going to talk about that right now. The point is that, like, there's a lot of those simplistic mounts that were incredible. But it's undeniable that the store mounts had... Uh, more work put into them and the encorseled whatever worm there's another uh, the, like a the mana sperm worm, worm. That, uh, yeah. is one of the taxi point mounts in dragon shadowlands and again that was a pretty not dragonlands shadowlands the so they're continually basically grabbing oh, yeah, things Articuno. from the next expansion and they're putting them in the store now yeah so instead of that you know being... remember this one remember whenever we got people to come out and i think it was didn't tiger panda buy this mount and then he was out in front of Stormwind and he used the, the fucking uh, the mount special and I like logged off and I got really mad. It, it's just, it's like, I remember this so well. Cool, very thematic reputation. And I remember where... like, remember whenever they added the first, uh, the first cosmetic armor set? And it was that stupid clown set. And I'm like, what kind of fucking idiot buys this? And I go into Dalaran and Tiger Panda is sitting there with his with the full set on. Oh my god. And then I was sitting there getting mad about it, and then more people showed up. Yeah, the fairy suit. Exactly. You know, we maybe raise a dragon at the end, we get the dragon as a mount. No, it's stuff in the store. That's just like one example of how something could be a really cool in-game reward that could be tied to content that you would want to play and a story that the developers of the game would love to make, but instead it was yanked out of that and it was put onto the store and it's just a very short-term carrot. And I think for me, all I see here is short-termism. Everywhere, short-termism. Can you imagine if Overwatch did not lose cultural capital? Can you imagine if with Overwatch yeah. they said, listen, everyone, we really cocked up development. Overwatch so could have had the same level of relevance and clout that Valorant does. Like, you could have been able to get e-girls by playing Overwatch. <laughs> oh, God, no, all right, never mind. No, I'll skip sorry. that one. It, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you guys, the players, and I'm sorry to the team, because not you know they worked on a lot of stuff, and it's just not going to see the light of day. This sucks. What we're going to do is we're going to make the best of it. We're going to launch Overwatch 2, and it's going to be like this and then they hadn't done all the things that turned the players against them. You can still have a battle pass, but put enough Overwatch coins in the battle pass to earn the next one. And if you're not going to do that, make it be a battle pass that never expires and can be swapped back to, like the Halo Infinite one. They could have kept on doing things like that that would have actually felt good to players, mm -hmm. but at every single turn, the move towards the short-term money thing was made. Yep. Even Diablo 4. D4, great launch experience. Very fun first time, fun playing through it and different yeah. characters, different builds. Season one, undercooked. There's, it's just not that big of a season. Well, the, season, I think undercooked would imply that it was being cooked. I don't even know if it was in the oven. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, guys. Like the barber being that OP, I mean, did they test it? Well, why would they? We did it for them. The end game undercooked, right? That's not the time to start putting in your hyper expensive cash shop. I know you want yeah. the money now. I know the short termism of the people who ultimately sign off on the budget for the dev team. Their short termism is very strong and they want the money now. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you do it too early, and you know, what are you doing? You're that's right. Was it cutting your face to spite your nose? No, cutting your nose to spite your face? face? Yeah, I don't that's, that's basically. Blizzard Entertainment hurt itself in well, its Well, it's like whenever you try to, like, you know, if you're trying to get a cat to trust you, you don't just try to, like, w fucking, like, wrestle the cat down, you know? You have to, like, come here, you pet it a little bit, 
and then you pet it a little bit more and then you gradually get it to come in the house and then you feed it and then it's your cat now right like you don't just fucking you know put like a little trap with like a laundry basket and you pull the stick out and the cat's trapped and you're like ha ha gotcha and that's what they do that's what boys are trying to do man just the confusion is a, a bunch of you know i don't know if the, the freaking mbas get in because that's the sad thing with blizzard entertainment mm -hmm. their artists are magnificent you know the cinematics they can put together are incredible their games look incredible I mean, overwatch 2 is gorgeous looks Some nice those character even a larry the new hero oh what a great design really fun to play hero really great like you know character design the voice everything's just pitch perfect great game developers absolutely being led by people guilty of a lot of short-termism and that short-termism is obviously causing a lot of long-term harm and that is how blizzard has been able to snatch cultural defeat from the jaws of victory no sure because have. the thing is overwatch 2 is a really fun game it has problems but the core mechanics like it's fun diablo 4 is a pretty damn good action rpg maybe you might prefer poe's flavor of it but it's yeah. not a bad game world of warcraft dragonflight it's the best modern World of Warcraft expansion, hands down. It's not as cool as Legion, but it's not as systemically mm -hmm. batshit as any of the recent expansions. It's a great expansion. And that's why I say Defeat from the Jaws of Victory. World of Warcraft's got a great expansion. Overwatch 2, when it is just the game the devs made and not everything else around it, is a great game. Diablo 4, flawed, like, great, but with flaws. They have I think these games are okay. Like, I don't agree that they're, like, this amazing, personally. Like, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I really don't. I think that they're okay. Like, Diablo 4, like, if you actually look at the, like, core nuances of the game, there's a lot of really big problems, whether it's, like, collision issues, like, rubber banding problems, hitboxes, spell indicators. The game actually has a lot of problems. And Overwatch, for example... Like, I find it to be very disorienting and bad that, like, whenever I'm being healed or attacked, half of my screen is yellow or red. Like, on the corners, I find that to be very, like, it's like sensory overload. And it, I don't think it should, it, it shouldn't have to be like that. There's no reason that that is mandatory for it to be like that. I, I don't understand it. And it's the same thing with WoW. Like, I mean, WoW has a lot of problems, too, with, like, the amount of abilities the game has. Like, Mythic Plus having these, like, toxic systems, like, uh, key down ranking and, you know, like, raiding, having it to, like, oh, you have to clear a bunch of trash to do a raid, and it takes forever. And then by the time that you actually clear the trash, you have to summon, you don't have a warlock, you have to go out and summon people. Like, there's all of these big problems that the game has. And I feel like you should should take these seriously like i mean i don't think these games are like i, I think they, they they're they play relatively well yeah but like whenever you get down to the nuts and bolts of them they have a lot of problems at everything to win we all know who and what forces have uh, ended up in all those victories just being made impossible mm -hmm. what a crazy and sad situation I think most of all sad because like for us we can just go do something else but for yeah. the people who work in these games who can like the people you know you work in a larry and you try to make a larry it's like the imagine best you work you your fucking ass off and you're like trying to make the best game possible and you're the guy that was able to make um you know like one of the really cool bosses that everybody likes and wow or you make this really cool mount and it's like your passion project and then finally, you know, like you you get it submitted, it gets approved by the committee of mount approvers, and then it, it's put on the store and like the announcement comes out and you're like uh, fucking like everybody is shitting on it because it's on the store. And then you make a comment under the tweet and then people are accusing you of stealing breast milk and saying that you're killing the game. And it's like, what a big surprise that they're having problems you know like it, like that that's the life of a fucking blizzard developer like i i bet it probably sucks i do i bet it probably fucking sucks and i got hired six months ago they didn't even have to do any they didn't have to do with any of this shit
you know? You make all the skins, you put a lot of effort in, you animate everything to be just right. Your release comes out and it's uh, 9% on Steam and the whole internet's against you. Can you imagine how shit that's going to feel to yeah. that person? And in a reality where every bit of work that they did was stellar. The new PvP maps, let's say they're stellar. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> the developers are being so screwed over by the people who lead them. That ultimately is the situation that we are left with. Mm -hmm. Blizzard is turning the screw. This is a company that needs to start playing the long game. It's as simple as that. Long-term thinking gets you long-term results. That's what you need. Short-term thinking does damage. That's what we're seeing. That's it for me. Of course, check out our sponsor. They He's support right. and actually make this show possible. Um, I would not be able... This is one of the things that a lot of, uh, I, I think especially Japanese uh, companies do a lot better, it seems, is that they have like a much more long-term perspective in like making profit and like making products than like American companies. I think it's probably both cultural and built off of like how impactful quarterly earnings reports are here. But I don't know what it's like over there, like uh, in terms of corporate expectations. I don't know if it's the same or not. So I can't really speak to that. But it certainly seems like Japanese countries or uh, again, companies uh, do a much better job at that to like if it was just youtube adsense money we are running I, I think this is like a systemic american sponsors problem that actually uh let us keep the lights on so thank you to them with that said mm -hmm. i'll see you next time there it is there it is Juan nintendo games pump dlcs every few months yeah but somehow they don't damage their reputation in the same way that blizzard does so i think that's really what matters right they're doing it in a way that isn't that is somehow agreeable with the player base and i think that does matter so let's go back japanese companies have crunch too yeah but the difference i'll link you guys the video this is a great video from bellure like i saw this it got recommended i thought it was kind of a long video but i figured fuck it i'll sit through it and watch it i'm glad i did i mean it's just that I think also like the crunch and like the employee experience playing like making a game all of that matters for sure but that's not something that the customer cares about the customer doesn't care about how much work went into the game the customer cares about is the game fun to play if people had to work for 100 hours and live inside of the office but the game is good the customer is going to be like man well you got to do what you got to do and if the game sucks and it had happened they said wow what a predatory horrible company we need better worker protections actually the customer doesn't care e in either case they just want to play a good game that's it so I, I think the truth is that like the problem with a lot of these games is bellewer is right he summed it up at the end it, it's it's short-term thinking like everything that they do is like a short-term plan and that is it. There's no like long-term like uh, methodology to this or anything else. Yeah, D4 good in my eyes. Great, I'm glad you enjoy it. Japan is one of the worst working conditions. Yeah, but nobody cares about the workers. If they did, they wouldn't buy Nikes, but Nike is a billion dollar company, so <laughs> nobody cares about working conditions the customer doesn't give a fuck about that like what we talk everybody's like oh wow wow amazon bro amazon's making people piss in bottles that's horrible well yeah yeah no i'm gonna order on amazon prime day for sure so of course yeah they've got these great deals on underwear they get underwear delivered to my house yeah nobody cares nobody actually cares people only care in a theoretical sense where it doesn't affect them and not nobody, of course. Oh, well, I care. Yeah, I don't want to argue with you. But, like, I think most people, people at large, do not care. Good video. Make sure to give it a like. We haven't watched a Bellier video in quite a while. Should Americans work more than Japan does with less va vacation time? I don't know how much people, like, I don't know how much Americans work. I have no idea. Like, the, the point is still the same. It doesn't matter. And like that's the whole that's that's the argument that I'm making about this whole thing, right? Is that the customer does not care about how hard like how hard it was to do anything. Like it doesn't that doesn't mean anything. Like there's like a very like okay, so let me think of a way to give, a way to put it. And this is a problem that a lot of streamers have. 
And the streamers have this problem because they think that by working hard, they will be successful. It is one of the worst mentalities to have to think that all you have to do to be successful is work hard. Because there are a lot of people that work hard and they're never successful. That's just how it is.